Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Speak Your Truth. This is the radio show where we talk about the real truth, the real truth about God, about business, and about family. Hi, I'm R.V. Robinson. I'm the master speaker, trainer, international speaker, and author. And I have an exciting show for you today because it's all about marketing. And today with me, our member of the Christian Speakers in Business movement is none other than Kathy Lewis Sanders. Kathy is a visionary of Market It You, Market You and it's spelled M-A-R-K-I-T-U-Y-O-U. Very unique. She is the she is the uh, it is a she is the owner of a marketing company designed to assist entrepreneurs to build and create their brand in the marketplace through social media as well as utilizing traditional marketing practices. In development of a company brand, it includes website design, photography, videography, and graphic art design. The process often involves event planning and strategic marketing to achieve the mission of developing a company's presence in the marketplace. Therefore, we, she can market you. Yay. Right. Hey, welcome, <laughs> Kathy. Thank Woo-hoo. you. I know my name kind of gets a little tongue twisted here. Market <laughs> you. It's a pun. Market you, I know, I love it, I love it. You know, one thing I love about having you on the show is because you have your own radio show, so you know how to interview. I know when when you and I, when I went on your show, we had such a great time. It that, was like having a party. I know, it was like having a party. So we're going to have a little party here this okay. morning, this morning. So first, before we begin, I always like to find out, how did people get into whatever it is they're doing? So, I mean, is it a God thing? Is it a, you know, experience thing? So how did you get to be that marketing genius that you are today? Wow. You know what? Um, thank you for that compliment. I think it's a combination of both. And and I believe one day you and I were talking about this. And I it, it's interesting that you said, is it a God thing? Because um, it kind of did start in church. And my, as a little girl, um, I remember my pastor always just calling on me to do um, hospitality, like be the person that stands behind the mic and um, shares the announcements or whatever needs to be shared. He would just always call on me. So I was the one that was presenting something or sharing something. And I didn't know then. I was too young. How would I know? But in almost every career, or a job growing up, I was always the one being pulled to present, to share about the product, to share about the um, the service, to talk about the company, um, and and I said sort of just fell into it. <laughs> it sounds like you had a natural born talent, and they recognized it. Somebody did, yes, and so I and then I liked it too. So I, I really do. I like the sizzle. I like the excitement. Um, I really do get a true joy of seeing someone else's product or service uh, get recognized, and and then they they have a following. That's exciting. Very exciting. Now, tell me, you know, and there's been a lot of confusion over this. What is the difference between branding and actual marketing? Oh, and I forgot. I wanted to share the title. Um, <laughs> the title is "What Came First, Branding or Marketing?" So that's Kathy's title. So let's jump just jump into the questions, which is, "What is the difference?" Because I know a lot of people get confused and they kind of use them together, or they they're just a lot of people are confused. So help us out. What is the real truth when it comes to branding and marketing? Well, you know what's really interesting. Um, it, I, as an entrepreneur and um, um, someone who's been in the business, I, I do realize it's one of those words that kind of is in, 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 um, interchangeable. But brand is kind of simple. I'm going to kind of go back and forth. But brand is really simple if you look at what you call it, what the name of it is. You've given it a name. It's been identified in the marketplace. Um, there's lots of sodas. But right. there's only one Coca-Cola. Right, right. And so, but Coca-Cola also has a um, an emotion attached to it, the real thing. Mm. You know, so it's that picture in your mind 
of what you think about when you're drinking a Coke, and that's the brand. But marketing is the activity. It's how I get the message out into the community of where to buy my Coke. Do I want a liter? Do I want a six pack? Uh, do I want the little small individual bottle? You know, where can I buy Coke? You know, so marketing is all the activity that leads up to the sale. Got it. Okay. Um, I know. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So brand is your 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 visual, your logo, your right. colors, yes. your website. Yes. And marketing's like the email that you send to send people to your website. And right. Well, all the activity. Let's say activity. even your your um your cold calling, your search engine marketing, your tr being involved in like trade shows and or networking, all that. networking, networking, all that. Uh -huh. That's marketing. Marketing. Well, that's very clear. No one has ever said it that clear before. So excellent. Thank you. All right. That was brilliant. All right. So let's talk about marketing for a minute and then we'll talk about branding. So, so what is meant by push marketing? That's a, that's a new term. We don't hear it very often. I love this real, real stuff, real, real uh, techniques you're sharing with us. So what is push marketing? Give it to us. Well, push really is kind of what I, just said the activity of the uh, of the product or service. I'm I'm putting it on advertising. I'm putting it on television right now. We're on radio. We're pushing right. Okay. This, uh, concept of the radio uh, through Christian women or Christians in business and speaking the truth. We're pushing that whole concept out there. So that is the push. That's really right. that simple. Okay, so pushing is is when you send an email out, you you put a social media post. Is that that's a push? Yeah, or you know, when, like you said, is you 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 you're, you want to get that message out there that encourages the person to buy or sell. So I got to right. push it out there, right? I right. got to get it out there either through the the message has to be received in some kind of way. The customer is not the one who initiates the advertising or the PR or the radio show or or anything, so any of those activities. Well, right. it's, like, it's like speaking then. When I go out and speak to get clients, that's a push. Right. Right? right. And then my brand, we're going to turn around and maybe my brand pulls them pulls them in. So tell us about Exactly. You got it. <laughs> Your brand pulls. And, and, and not only does it pull, you find an association with it. For instance, I'm a, I know you've seen this before. i, I I was trying to think of a visual to share with you this morning, but the actress Kelly Fry, she's in these new commercials with Buick. And you know that when you watch television, they say, that's not a Buick. You know, and you see the whole lifestyle of the person and she goes and gets in the wrong car because she's familiar with what Buick used to look like. Oh, now my. it has this new chic look, and, you know, and so, and then, so you buy into her personality Right, and right. so that's pulling you to right. get that type of car. Well, that that's a, a great ad, and I haven't seen it, but I can visualize it by what you said because I remember my parents used to have Buicks. Right. Buicks, right? Buicks were known as like an older person right. car, not anymore. So, <laughs> right. So having this this young uh, blonde, right, blonde right. kind. Of, then um, that that really changes the market for them. So th again, that is brilliant because now oh, yeah. they've opened the market to younger generations, changed it uh, from you know just the baby boomers and 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 up. Yeah. Exactly, and that was smart because you know the baby boomers. We want Mercedes, and they right. are it now, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You got it. You got it. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> right. That's great. Okay, so pull branding. That I love that. So, how does someone brand? How do you brand yourself? How do you brand your company? I mean, I know we need to work with someone like you, but where do they start? Just kind of take us through that whole process. Well, you know, your brand can be done in so many different ways. And again, this is one of those words where it, it is interchangeable and probably in the marketing field is overused because, you know, if we get real technical, we'll say, yes, your product, your price, your place, your distribution. And that sounds so technical. But branding really is, I know your name. 
like for instance, the organization Christian Speakers in Business or Speak Your Truth Radio. Yeah, in the background, we've created all these things, but now we're taking it to the live part. Now we're doing radio and you're bringing in um, all the experts that are part of the organization for the right. Christian Speakers in Business and they're right. coming on these live shows here on right. the radio. And so you're branding everybody. You're branding the organization. You're branding the people that are coming as experts. Right. Um, and then so those who need help in the different areas like finance or insurance or uh, speaking engagements or marketing or sales or leadership, they're getting all the information. So that in itself is branding and it's pulling and pushing at the same time. So mm -hmm. that's one way. You can brand yourself, as we all know, through social media. You can brand yourself in the marketplace in something as simple as a trade show or so, or, or even um, cold calling. You're going to go out and so you have a reputation, right? Mm. Like you can go back to, listen, I love the cars. Let's just stick with the cars. There's one right now with, uh, what's his name, Matthew Conaghy. In the oh, my God, the Lincoln. Right. <laughs> oh, of course. What, now, that is brilliant advertising. Is is he, is he, oh, is he grabbing? Oh, he is, yeah. like, makes you want to, like, does he come with a car? I does said that. Yeah, does he come with a car? Exactly. <laughs> and, and then so they have this lovely tagline. You know, it's a, he says, uh, sometimes you have to go back where you were to know where you're going, to move <laughs> forward. And he's but all he, sexy he, and, yeah, he, you know, driving the car. <laughs> yeah, he's all sexy and he says it in such a sultry manner. Right. You know, exactly. Usually women talk, uh, you know, women on commercials talk like right. that. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, it, it works. Boy, I'm sure that that has increased sales just by adding him. Don't well, you want to go get a Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> well, I still am not sold on Lincoln. But, um, I don't know. We may see a lot more of young women driving Lincolns. Uh, yes. I, I wonder how it affects men because sometimes, you know, it, you know, it could just – you know, affect one one uh, gender, but I bet the men want to be him so they get a Lincoln too. You know, well, exactly. I mean, they're really, <laughs> they're really driving this whole campaign because they have another one with it was called the Winning Hand, and they're showing him driving this the what is it the uh, MKX? It, it's the other car, a little bit more sophisticated, uh -huh. and, and it's uh, the as him with his woman, and they're playing this soft jazz in the background. Oh. I don't think I've cards seen and, and, you know, and they're like, and the, you know how guys at the end of the evening, they untie their ties. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Like falling down on their chest. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I got to get this car. I got to get this car. You know, so they're setting the stage. Wow. I that's haven't branding. seen that one. Wow, that's great. That Yeah, bring some more of those uh, great ideas. I wanted to just say one thing about this show that I want to – that I've been working on the brand, and again, it's a it's a new show, and we're just working it. But it, it's like I, you know, I'm the brand is really bringing, um, you know, God and business together. There's so many, uh, you know, radio shows. There's so many things, Christian radio shows and Christian things, and and they're just keeping, you know, God in a nice little box, and everything is fine, and da da da. Right. And, and I just want to like expose it and go, you know what? We are people. We are business people. We have things that happen to us. You know, we have to market ourselves. We have to, even though God's on our side and God is our CFO, we have to take action and we've got to do some things. Yes. And, and there's some, re, you know, real truth out there that, that we need to just say and, and not just sugarcoat everything, but just say, hey, sometimes stuff happens and, you know, thank God we got God on our side. But, you know, um, everything isn't just coming up roses all the time in business, even if you're a Christian, you know. Well, I think that's a really good um, point to bring up. And if we were uh, focusing in on, on on people in business, the disciples were a perfect example. There you go. Of of business people and they were everyday common people. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors, right? Uh, they, they did real jobs. They got their hands dirty. Um, right. Sometimes they couldn't catch any fish. Remember? Right. And right. Just had to go tell them, put your, 
put Net your on the other side because that's where all the fish are. <laughs> they also, um, I'm, they use profanity. They they were real people, you know. Oh. So they had to have their edges uh, softened over, and that's as they grew as a Christian, they their faith grew. But guess what? Their businesses also grew. They were successful. And, and they weren't hiding their their belief. As a matter of fact, you know, that was a process for them to become believers. And so that's who we are. That's right. We are. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Great. Okay, so let's talk about um, how do you uh, – we talk about how do you brand. But let's talk about rebranding and refreshing because recently I've been going through for the past several months – a what's called a refresh on a brand. So my my personal brand with my company is a star, and so and and my colors are are red and gold. And so we're taking that we we're kind of doing a rebrand, a refresh. What's called a refresh. So I keep my star. It's just my logo's been redone a little bit. How often, if ever, should people go through that? I just felt like I I needed that because it wasn't quite there. Um, when I did it several years ago. So is that something that people should do or consider? Because I know some people might be so hung up on their brand, they don't want to change anything, and maybe it's not working for them as good as it could. So talk about refresh, rebranding a little bit. Well, a refresh or a rebrand in the concept that you're talking about, um, you probably uh, tapped in that the activity or the um, – bottom line of what you were trying to do, the bottom line of what all businesses are doing is their profit margin. You know, what is it that we're doing, the activities and the service and the product that we're providing, how is it affecting the bottom line of our business? Mm -hmm. And I think that when we recognize that, let's say, for instance, maybe your concern was the number of members that you have, was the quality of service uh, being projected to them. Do they see the value? You don't have to get into right. these mushy words, value, benefit, features. Marketing should enhance those things so that I, I become a loyal uh, fan or follower of your of your product or service. So you're saying, okay, so I needed to change my colors. That, that, that could be good and bad. No, I kept my colors. No, I'm, I'm saying overall, not just oh, somebody business, else. but it could be good or bad. And why I say that, I'm going to go back to Coca-Cola for a minute because you remember that Coca-Cola made this bad announcement that they were going to change their formula. Oh. Remember back in the day? Yeah. Like, Woo. In the late 70s or early 80s, somewhere in there, maybe some. that's a good good indication. But when they did that, it made their uh, consumers concerned. They right. got really concerned, and so they lost market share to Pepsi. They never right. got that back. They right. never got that back because they were concerned. You know, but you have some diehard Coke fans like you have diehard football fans. I'm they're, not changing. I don't care if they ever win a game. They're addicted. <laughs> they're addicted. That's they're right. Addicted. Hey, I want to talk about the Christians in business for a moment, that brand, because, you, Kathy, you're on the steering committee helping us steer it. And, and, and when it started two years ago, it was Christian uh, women speakers movement. And when we got together, which was a complete surprise, and I think you spearheaded this um, and kind of opened it up. You know, I'm thinking we're at a board meeting, and all of a sudden we're doing a rebrand and a refresh, and I'm like, ah! You know, and like what's going on? What's going on? I'm going to go with it. And and but but you were right because what was happening is we were keeping out half of the population, right? And it looked like on the website that it was evangelistic, which was a, right. a surprise. And maybe two years ago, when when it first came to me, it was more in the board and the group that was helping me, the council then maybe. But my intent was always, and you know, I'm always about this. And that's bringing God and business together and bringing right. it into more stages. So as a right. public speaking uh, coach uh, coming out of corporate America, I learned in corporate that we can't bring God to the stage or right. even to the water hole, right? Right, so, right, right. So over the years, I mean, that has been my mission is to say it's okay if you're a Christian to bring, bring God to the stage. Just, you know, you don't even have to be careful. Uh, just ask for a shot of the Holy Spirit and, they, he, and the Holy Spirit will guide you. Yes. To how much 
or how little to, to absolutely share. So when we got together, um, that came up and, and you spearheaded it and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So we're going through a, a new fresh rebrand then and we decided together that we'd keep the colors the same for now. Yes. Right? So it wouldn't be a huge like, wait, what happened to the Christian speakers movement? Right. right. And it was kind of like a gentle move over to Christian speakers in business. Right. So talk to that a little bit. Like what were you thinking when you were guiding us all there? Well, again, your colors are very important because it's pretty much who you are. It's your signature. Your mm-hmm. brand is your signature. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to take you to a, an analogy of a football team. You know, they may change their uniform. They may change their color of their helmet, but not in essence, the color, but maybe the way it's positioned. Maybe it's more gold than red, maybe more red than gold, but it still has that brand because that's what their fans are used to. And yeah. and, and so you, you, you move it around just a little bit, but you're not changing the essence of who – what your organization is about. And I want to focus on you as the owner when I answer this. You're a woman and you're in business. But when I see you, I get simultaneously, I get R.V. Robinson, the speaker, trainer, woman in business. I don't have to separate who you are. You're all one package. (laughs) I don't think she knew you were going to say. No, no, no. You're all one package. You don't have to, you don't have to separate. And it's the same thing that you're saying because I'm a a Christian and I'm in business. I don't have to separate. Right. Compartmentalize. Right. Exactly. We're on the same page when you, when you say that I am so right there with you. It's the thing that drew me to your organization. Right. The very first venue that I attended, the words that you said when you were on stage, I said, could it possibly be two people on the planet (laughs) feel that way? I really feel that way. Why do I have to change who I am? Um, Because I'm a Christian and I'm in business. Right. Like you said, God is our CEO. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us and nudges us into all truth. Truth even in business, because that means our integrity. We have integrity, Right. Right, right, right. There's certain things we won't do, and there's certain right. things we will do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and and you know what I I often tell people. I mean, and and I really work at this. But being a business owner, especially being a woman business owner like yourself, we're we're strong, and we can make decisions. We make a lot of decisions, and we make them fast. Yeah, and we do. Once in a while, I forget to consult my CEO. I yes. know of investment, and then I'm going, oh, Lord, daddy, daddy, get me out of this. Right. How do I get out of it? So right. I, I've learned just to take my time. You don't, I don't have to make those decisions so fast. I can take some time. I can pray about it and come yeah. back. And, and have the right decision and the right choice. And I don't have to like backtrack and, and beg for daddy to come and save me because I didn't consult him in the first place. So it's really important as a Christian in business, especially as an A-type personality where you're used to taking charge, you're used to making decisions. It's really important to just step back a moment and let God have a say so. Well, you know, it's so interesting that you said that because even this morning, and I love what you're saying, even this morning as I got up to prepare for our radio uh, segment this morning, uh-huh. I got so busy into making sure that I had the right vernacular, that I, was, <laughs> that, I that I had the uh, representation and sounding marketing, and, and, and then I said, oh, my God, I didn't even pray. Oh, I had to stop everything, I, you know, and I stopped right there, and I said, Father, just help me this morning. Prepare my Aww. word. What is it that you want me to share with the audience? What is it that RV, how can I support? You know, I had to take it all that academia stuff we do. Right. And just let go and ask God for direction. And I think that's the big difference. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that, you know, did I ask my father? Right. Right. Did he say yes or no? <laughs> you know, am right. I am I going to represent myself? Am I going to represent the kingdom of God? Am I going to do well by the people that you send to me? You know, so even this morning, it, it hit me. I was just so belted over and I said, oh, my God. 
I'm, I'm sorry. I had to apologize because I just went wife wow. uh, just getting ready, didn't acknowledge him. I woke up and I, I was like, oh, I didn't even say thank you for waking up <laughs> this morning, you know? Right. Or thank you for another beautiful day yeah. in paradise. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love your spirit when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're all the same and sometimes we bulldoze through life, you know, right. and bulldoze through the day. So yes. we'll just, yeah, just take it that that time to be with him all right so let's talk about how do you market a product this is like we'll bring it on home with this this uh, question so how do you market a product well again it's going to sound redundant but it isn't um, <laughs> when, you're actually, when you're actually marketing the physical activity uh-huh in the beginning it's all the activity that leads up to a sale how would I know to buy McDonald's french fries if I don't present it to the public. I need to find it either through an advertising, which is paid. All advertising is paid. Then there's public relations or PR. PR is where you're uh, sharing your message in non-paid uh, avenues, as they call publicity, free publicity, mm -hmm. which could be um, uh, conversation, uh, uh, it could be if, if they're not nonprofit, but most nonprofits have uh, get advantage, take advantage of PSA announcement, public service announcements. Right. Salespeople are a part of the and the sales professional. I don't want to say salespeople; that kind of cheapens it a little bit. Makes you think about a used car salesman. Right. <laughs> right. Sales is an important part of marketing because you actually really do kind of have to knock on the doors or um, have a, a booth at a trade show. At some point, there's or get out and speak. Get out and speak. Exactly. Get Let out. people know you're out there. Right. You have to exchange the product for the cash and, and then your cash register. Radio. That's what we're doing right now. Right. Television, social media. Uh, and really, not just social media on the social fun side with your friends, but having a strategic social media plan you know, where you care about the analytics and, and you want to know who's actually visiting and engaging on your pages. Right. There's so many ways nowadays that we can market. But I always share with my clients, it, if you want more sales, you need to get in front of more people. Yes. So whether that's speaking, teleclasses, webinars, right. radio shows, right. networking events, trade yes. shows, or even um, focused uh, social media, it yes. all works. But you yes, can't get sales or even more cold calls, right? More cold calls. But sitting behind your computer playing on Facebook is not going to get your message out to the world and have people fall in love with you and want to buy. So we no, have to... Yeah, we have to get referrals. Referrals, um, referrals, which we call yeah. the warm market. You're familiar with that. And what a lovely way to have a business is that you have uh, very happy clients who refer you to other people. Absolutely. You know, and they're happy. Like, well, Susie used you, and so I like Susie and what Susie does. That's an endorsement, and so I want to try you out because you can solve my problem. Absolutely. I, I uh, received two referrals this last week, and they're really s practically sold. Now, when you do get a referral, what I always recommend is be a warm referral. So, in other words, the person that's referring you, your previous client or your previous friend, right. have them do a three-way conversation or have them meet. In this case, you know, we met at lunch. And so we built that right. relationship because other women didn't know me. She was from Virginia. She didn't know me. But by having lunch and breaking bread together and learning that, you know, we're all Christians, right. you know, we sealed the deal. Right. So it, it was really funny. Like at lunch, we were, you know, she was like still not 100% because, you know, there was a money issue. So I said, listen, you two talk. I'm going to go to the ladies' room. Right, right, right. <laughs> you two talk. And then, you know, so I gave them some space to kind of discuss it among themselves. Right, exactly. You know? And then I came back, and, and she's willing to sign up. So when you do do a referral, it's important not to just send an email and get out of it. But really care. If you care about that client, then right. Work with them, hold their hand, and put the two together like you're matchmaking. Well, and yeah, you're the center of influence. You know? Yeah, 
Exactly. Is there any reason why this is happening? You made the referral, and and you want them to feel comfortable. You don't want to just run and hide. Right. Well, I get so many referrals from um, emails like, "Here, so and so meet so and so." So now we've got this dance we're doing. Where right. I'm emailing them because I have no phone number, and they're you know emailing me or not. And most of the oh, time, right. Apps, down to the ground. So right. referrals work if you hand, you know, take care of them and, and hand, uh, you know, just kind of be the ambassador for them and get them together. And again, some referrals, in this case, the referral I got, the gal got a referral fee. So it's worth your time to do that. Too. Oh, like the finder's fee. Yeah. I like yeah. That. Yeah. Referral oh, fee. Uh-huh. Yeah. Affiliate fee. So, I wanted to mention one other thing before I forget, yeah. not to cut you off. There's a no, go ahead. Of, of, of marketing that some of us don't pay attention to. And I found a perfect example to use. Okay. Like, you've got one minute. <laughs> okay, it's called, it's called product placement. And product placement, that, okay. Movies and sports, but like what we're doing right now, I know you and I are the only ones that can actually see the video piece, but behind you on your in your bookshelf, you have this word believe and dream. And so yes. A perfect place you put, but you put believe and dream. So that's a placement of a word that represents who RV is. Aww. You believe. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus. Yep. You believe in dreams. So that's product placement. Right. See what I'm and saying? you can see I'm in my red chair. You're in your red, red chair. Cabinet. And look at here's a little statue of a dog. <laughs> right? <laughs> and if you look closer, there's a uh, I see your there. candles. <laughs> candles. Right. Yes. So you got to have the dog in there because I just love dogs. <laughs> I know you do. You're an animal person. <laughs> I, and look, I live life vicariously through you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Kathy, our time is up today, but thank you so much. I hope you will come back. I know we've not even scratched the surface of Mark. No, we haven't. <laughs> And and next time maybe uh, you can come back and talk a little bit more because I know our hot topic everybody wants to know is how to market yourself with social media. So let's give them the real truth about yeah, how to do that. Right. <laughs> Labor intensive. Labor intensive. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's why they need to hire you. All right. So if you want to get a hold of Kathy and and get more information about how about branding and marketing and how she can help you. Just go to our website at www.christianspeakersinbusiness.com. That's christianspeakersinbusiness.com. And go to our speaker connection, and you can connect with Kathy Lewis Sanders. Thank so you. Thank you, Kathy, for being on the show. You've been thank fabulous. You. And thank, thank you. you, everybody out there that's listening. And remember... Um, uh, let me see, I want to do, oh, remember John 8, 3, 2 says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. All so, right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a blessed day. God bless. Okay, bye-bye.